Welcome back to Good Life Western Sports, sponsored by LNH Manufacturing. I'm Bobby Leanne. For over 40 years, Carol Nilsson has been riding and training horses in Nebraska. Over those years, it's not the number of horses that have come and gone through her barn, but the number of students, most specifically youth, that she has coached and inspired in and out of the arena, which has been most impressive. Her legacy continues today in 2017, as many of the Nebraska's best trainers built their initial foundation for riding, training, and working for youth under Carol's leadership. As hundreds of youth prepare for the upcoming state 4-H horse show at Fauner Park in Grand Island, July 17th through the 20th, many of the exhibitors, parents, 4-H leaders, and trainers can trace their beginnings back to Carol Nielsen from Norfolk, Nebraska. do not have a history with horses. My family had no history with horses at all. So my mom's cousin had a horse down near San Diego. And when I was four, I saw that horse and it was, that was it. And it was, there was a pony ride in town and it was the smell of them from the pasture, the, the sight of them. It was, that was it. I coaxed the horse to the fence and I got on. I was four years old. <laughs> Scared my parents to death, but that was it. And you know, they kept thinking I'm gonna outgrow this, but I never did. Because riding in LA was an experience. Um, our stables was about 100 yards from a railway, railroad, and about a quarter mile from the freeway. And if you'd go through there, you, for $99 a year, you could rent the property under the high wires, and that's where the stables was. And I would ride my bike every day. Um, we rode, you push the button on the signal, five lanes of traffic stop, you went crazy. And it just saw some opportunity. You know, I never thought as a career just maybe come out. I loved it that when you flew into Omaha, you flew over cornfields and then you're in office buildings because in LA, you're never out of it. So that's what started it. That was my kind of motivation was just the safety. And then when I met these other people and then they wanted to show and the 4-H program is phenomenal in Nebraska. Absolutely phenomenal. Not, such, not at all in California at that time. And, you know, I thought, you know, I think we can do this. These kids are so talented, have such a passion for the horse, and they want to show what can we do to make them achieve that goal. And so we started training. <laughs> but the main was we rented was Edge Park Farms, which used to be a mile from Norfolk. Right now it's where Dietz Furniture is. And then Summer Richard, Summer Klein at the time, then bought it. But we had it for probably from... 77, 78, well into about the mid 80s and moved here in 90 and built this place, but um, beautiful barn. But again, there wasn't a lot of boarding business because people had their own places and stuff. And But live, giving lessons and we just thought we were living the dream. <laughs> And I have a picture of Nick and Noelle Johnson. My, my best friend still is Levon Cried, but those were her two, two, two kids back in uh, 76, 77. And it, he just, we had a, a barrel horse that we brought with us that had, we could make an equitation horse. And poor Nick um, decided to go to districts. We didn't even know what districts were. District 4 H. We're like, great, go to Stanton. And we rode with the Silver Bit and Romel Reigns. California influence, nobody heard of it. <clears throat> so I went to Professor Warren, if those of you remember 4-H, Professor Warren, who was in charge of the 4-H program. We went to districts at Stanton. The arena was made out of a uh, snow fence. And I asked him if it, it was legal or illegal to ride in the Romel Reigns. And if any of you know Professor Warren, he had one arm and he chewed tobacco. And he spit, and he said, this is split rain country, but if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. And it's like, my poor kid's doomed. <laughs> You know, and Romel Range, you see a lot of riding in Romel, and I have a bunch of them over there, but I thought, oh, you poor kid. <laughs> we really worked on him, and, but he got reserve champion that day. And, you know, he's very fair about it, but boy, he let us know we weren't going to fit in that box very well. <laughs> but I traveled to their place, have bridal, will travel, you know. I would go to their houses, and the next year the diet would go, does she still need lessons? <laughs> Yes, yes. And they were so helpful to me as because they would challenge me. They would they'd want to learn English. Uh, okay, I better go learn some about English. And then Cheryl had the first reining horse we ever saw. And she goes, Well now what do I do with it? And so we better learn about reining. And they just were so supportive and Sharon Adams, God love her made the show outfits. You know, we'd go, somebody, because, and there were some wonderful trainers around at the time, Langs and Gordon Davis, and they did a lot of the breed shows, so, but we didn't go, we didn't know what the trends were, so that somebody would go watch and go, oh, we need to have the showmanship jacket, and she'd go whip one up, you know, and sew one up, and just 
phenomenal that they just stuck in there as parents and we went and won a lot of things and there's two plaques on the wall from them they're just great people they just they just stuck with us and we just kept going but most of them up here are you know professional careers or are great moms and you know i'm so proud of them it's like there they are <laughs> Writer Deb Rahauser that I, I did mention in the beginning once. Her dad, Lee Rahauser, was I think vice president uh, up here at the college. And Northeast Technical Community College had many names before that, and it was just a small college, right? And she had a horse, and she came out and took lessons. And I have her picture up here too. She's just a wonderful child. And he said, and we did, and I do have that flyer somewhere too. In 77, I did the community services classes, and I love doing those, and I would love to do those again because those people like questions, you know. My greatest achievement would be winning the NRHA Limited Open World Championship and the first woman to do so. That was in 1999. But it was just two best friends traveling and it was an accumulation of money as we went. We had the time of our lives. We speak about it often and nobody knew who we were. <laughs> so nobody. And to win that, and we didn't even start out on that quest in the beginning. We just started winning and thought, well, this is kind of fun. So we've been to Kentucky and we ran 23 runs that year and I I think I won almost half and I didn't place any time under a third a third place. And but it was two best friends. So that's my fondest memory because there was no cell phones. There was no DVDs. It was two people talking. We would read the Atlas to each other because <laughs> we were so bored <laughs> in in that. But my my fondest memory, and I really want to get this one out there, and I do have the picture of it, is right behind you, and that is winning the circuit champion at Broken Bow on a mare called Cali Poco Zip. And the reason for that is is um, <clears throat> Janice is right there. Her dad, that's fifth generation horse, and they're from Broken Bow, and I, I rode the mare and. We had the show happened to be there in Broken Bow, and he was so excited and had all of his peers because he, he and him and Pitzer and all them were at one time, you know, I think his AQHA number is like 690 or something like that. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, I hope I do a good job on this mare. And she scored a 72 and a half both days. And he, there, and if you look at the picture, he's got his coat and his hat, his Stetson, and everybody was applauding, and it was just. You couldn't have wrote a Hollywood script because about two years later, starting in that year, but two years, is sure her mother had Alzheimer's and her dad died of a heart attack out fencing on the farm. But to see that excitement, it was like, ugh, you couldn't have made it any better. Well, back in the early 80s, like I say, Cheryl Smith had the first rainer. So we were so fortunate in Nebraska, we had Bob Loomis in Bean, Nebraska, and Doug Melhorn years later in Kearney. And so we'd go down and take a lesson, and you know, we just loved it. It's bigger than horsemanship and not as fast as barrel racing. I mean, it was a higher level. And it, uh, Ron Peterson started, it was not the Central Plains at the time, it was the Nebraska Rain Horse Association, then it died and it rose from the ashes to the Nebraska Performance Horse. That died out, and he kept saying, raining's gonna be big, raining's gonna be big. And many times at the quarter show, we'd have Tim McQuay, Bob Loomis, Craig Johnson, a quarter horse show and nobody had to do who they were and you know we just loved it and just just watching them and listening to them was fabulous we'd have clinics and there'd be like three people it's like okay he kept saying it's gonna be big <laughs> and we would then we put together the organization there'd be maybe 10 of us at the central plains and we'd type out the entry cards and somebody we'd throw in a hundred dollars you know at least we'd have gas money when we were done and we'd pull our money to go and you know, I look at it now and the horses were not phenomenal at all, but we had a great time and we learned to spin, we learned all sorts of things. And it's now grown, the Central Plains has grown where they have a $10,000 futurity. Um, the reigning futurity in Oklahoma City used to be in Columbus, Ohio, and NRHA moved. And I, I did read there's, is it 15 million in prize money all total that the NRHA puts out now? And it's 150,000 for the one win in the futurity. It's, it's just phenomenal. The degree of difficulty has gone up because sometimes we'd score a 75 and a 76. Yeah, that was for penalties. <laughs> and they added penalties. And, and it, just like gymnastics or something like that, the degree of difficulty got more and more. The patterns got tougher and tougher. And uh, Doug Melhon was our president. It started after a clinic, and I happened to be sitting there, and Tim McQuay and Doug Melholland and them, and I had a pencil. So I got to be secretary because I found a pencil. <laughs> or a pen in my purse, LeVon was treasure, and Doug was instrumental because he had a big name, and he'd won the Futurity that year, I think, at the 25th anniversary of it. So it was like, okay, let's start an organization. So it really has started. You know, Olympic, when the Olympians, your gymnast and your skaters, and they have the big coaches, some coach somewhere started them. 
you know, the live on that, and that was my part. This is dark. Just notes that are so, I'm so appreciative, and some of them are, are very, very old, you know, that are back in the 70s and 80s. 